Round 25 of NRL Fantasy is in the books, and I am stoked. Finally, return to form. The top guns, they're the top of this list. We've got a top 10 that is all guys that we've paid up big for and guys who have helped us win our fantasy finals. So let's get right into it here. First up, Tommy Turbo. We talked about him a bunch last week. We talked about this Tigers matchup. Now, look, Manly didn't win this game. They actually lost to the Tigers in this game, but it was a bit of a shootout. There's plenty of points on offer, and Turbo was a big beneficiary of that. So he came out with three tries, three line breaks, and 12 tackle busts. Basically, couldn't be stopped as a ball runner. And a really nice combination next to Ola Kowatu on the right side. So if you've got Turbo, at this point, Manly are looking really strong. Uh, they're, I mean, they lost this game, right? But their attack is looking strong. I think they're going to score a bunch of points on the run home. So I think you keep rolling out Turbo and you keep enjoying these big scores because he seems to be the form wing fullback of the competition right now. Next up, Dan Gagai. And an interesting stat line here. So I had the two tries. He had a try assist, a line break, a couple of line break assists there as well. Um, but the big thing here is the eight tackle bus and two forced errors. So put some shots on, force some errors in defense, but also clutched up an attack. And look, Dan Gagai, we talk about him a bunch. He has a very strong base stat floor where he's always scoring around that 40 points without doing too much in terms of attacking stats. And then when he has that bigger game where he scores a few tries, we see games like this, 89 points, had the two tries, absolutely dominant. Newcastle are pushing for that final spot. And I'll tell you what, Dan Gagai is a big beneficiary of that. Third up, Jerome Hughes, and he was on fire in this game as well. Um, big game for the Storm here. Hughes went off, so nearly 200 meters run here. He had the two try assists as well as seven tackle busts. Now, for Hughes, we've been seeing some games where the scores have been sort of hit and miss recently, you know, around that sort of 55 average mark, which, which is absolutely fine. But this was one of the pop games that we were hoping for with Jerome Hughes on this front home, especially with the fixtures they had as well. So but with Jerome Hughes, I'm loving that score. I'm a little bit concerned about next week, though. I'm looking at that and thinking, hey, maybe the Storm give them a rest. They're three wins clear on the top. They are 100% winning the minor premiership. They'll probably give Hughes a rest either this week or next week. So just keep that in mind as a Storm and Hughes owner. But uh, in general, we love the 87 points, and we'll roll through to next round. Next up, Isaiah Yo, and he was a captain for a lot of us. I know he was my captain this week. 85 points is absolutely fantastic. So for stats, it's very hard to pick with Yo. He always has a broad spectrum of stats, but I've chosen three here. 40 tackles, three offloads, 166 meters run. Now these are all regulation forward stats. And if you add these up, you're looking at a score around, what is that, around uh, 70 points there, close to 70 points. And you add in a few attacking stats here too. So we had a try assist in this game, which he's had a few of lately as well. And you go, boom, 85 points. He's locked in. He's killing it. One thing I'm thinking about here is there was some risk of Yo being rested next week or the week after with Penrith being in a good spot. But because they lost that game, there's now a scenario where they're sitting in fourth place as it stands. They probably want to go, they're probably going to want to compete for a higher spot and try and win a home prelim, ideally. But uh, if not, then they're going to be facing Storm in Melbourne or they might be facing the Roosters or potentially the Sharks as well. I think they'll want that second place spot to take that final home. Rolling through, Adam Reynolds is number five here, and he killed it as well. So against Parramatta, Parra rushed out to a 16-0 lead in this game, but the Broncos came back and put on a show here. Now for Reno, it was just a broad spectrum of statistics and very hard to choose again. Um, I've chosen a few here, so we had the try and two try assists. was very dominant. No Reese Walsh is a big part of that, so I look at that and I go, right, I think the fact that they had Sailor at fullback, who's a more traditional fullback compared to Reese Walsh, who he's kind of like a second 5 eighth. Uh, that meant that Adam Reynolds is uh, taking a lot of the creative um, responsibility in this game. You yeah, throw in the fact that Josh Rogers was his halves partner. It's no Ezra Mam either. Basically, it forced Reynolds to be that prime vintage Reynolds who we know and love, uh, who was producing all the points in this game. On top of that, 709 kick meters just dominated that hog, though. As we talk about Fogarty all the time with that sort of line, but 709 kick meters is absolutely massive and getting really strong for the base stats there as well. At 553K, he's actually a pod that you could look at if you do need a cheap player as well. So for him, 81 points. He was number five this week. And then we roll through to the next five. And again, some names we expect and one we don't. Now, Angus Crichton, three tries, 78 points. Probably not a big score for three tries, but still a fantastic game from him. Harry Grant, 76 points. Could have been higher, but he came off a bit early in this game. Still on fire. He's, he's been hot for the run home. And we got Adam Fanoa Blake with 75 points. Again, really strong base stats in this one and just a dominant ball runner. Um, Carl Pereira came in with 75 points too. So... In a loss to the Roosters, Khan Pereira was absolutely dominant and it was highlighted by that one line break where he just cooked everyone. Beat Tedesco one-on-one, -on -one, sort of threw a dummy and just ran through himself, outpaced Dom Young as well. 
Tell you what, if that sprint race was tomorrow, I'd be looking at Khan Pereira very closely. And finally, Kalen Pyle with 74 points, returned to form. He was very quiet in the first half, very quiet. And he absolutely lit the game up in the second half and totally dominated. Now, that is the top uh, top 10 scorers for around 25, guys. So hopefully you're in your grand finals this week. If not, no worries. You're still playing those uh, sort of consolation finals and playing for that overall rank. So we'll be back with some buys and some pods this week. Otherwise, good luck and you have a good